Graphical is great for executing queries, mutations, subscriptions, and exploring your GraphQL API with the built-in documentation explorer, typeahead support, and more. Graphical is open source and available on GitHub. There are issues and pull requests if you want to get involved and contribute. Graphical is also at the core of many other implementations, such as the GraphQL Playground, if you've used that before. Graphical and the GraphQL Playground merged not too long ago. So you'll want to watch and keep an eye on what happens in the graphical repo because all future work will happen there. There is currently a work in progress for Graphical 2. This includes a very modular graphical system that allows you to add plugins, override things such as the language service and many others. If you provide GraphQL as a service to your users, you could use something like the Graphical React package. This allows you to embed Graphical inside of your React application and provide all of the details it needs to fetch anything from your API. Let's now explore what it looks like to use and work with Graphical. When you launch Graphical for the very first time inside of your project or on a hosted service, it will look a little something like this. There are other customizations you can make, such as dark mode, if you're using something like GraphQL Yoga. On the left here, we can perform all of our operations, and on the right, we'll see the result. Before we go ahead and run our first operation, let's explore the documentation. On the right, we can click the Documentation Explorer and anything you have inside of your GraphQL API, providing that introspection is enabled, which we covered in a previous episode, you should see all of your root types here. For our root query type test, we can see a description and we can see all of the different fields that it has on that query. We can also see at the bottom here that we have some deprecated fields. And if we click to show deprecated fields, we can see all of those here and we can see that there is a warning that we shouldn't no longer use this. We can also search here if we search person, we will get a result for the person type and the person field on the query test. If we click person now, we can see that it doesn't have a description, but we can see what type it is. And if we click to go to that type, we can see all of the different fields that are on that person type. Let's go back to our root query test and we'll clear the search. We can see for all of our different fields, what types and scalar types are returned to us. Here we have a custom type test, deferrable and greeting. And we can see greeting here is returned in a nullable list. If we click on the streamable query, we'll get a little bit more information about what arguments are required. And here we can see we have delay of a type int that has a default value of 300. Then we have an optional description that is provided by whoever created this schema. Let's close out our documentation and we'll begin by writing our first operation. To create a query, I'm going to use the keyword query. We can omit the query keyword and just type our query like this. However, I want to perform a named operation. So we'll give our query a name. Using control space on Mac, I can get a list of all of the different fields on my current root query type. And from that, we'll select the person query and here we'll fetch the name and the age of that person. Now let's go ahead and execute this query by pressing on the execute query button. We can now see that we have the result of that query on the right. If we hover over the person query here, we'll get a definition from our type system of what this query is and what it returns. We can also click on the root query, the person query, or the person return type. Let's go ahead and click on person here and it will open inside of the documentation everything we need to know about that person type and what fields are available. If we now update this query to make it less pretty, I'll show you what the button for Prettify does. Let's add some lines, let's mess around where the brackets are here, and if we click on Prettify here, this will make everything look good. We can also open a new tab and using the keyword mutation, we can then perform a mutation on our GraphQL endpoint. We previously seen in this example, we only have one mutation available, but you access it in the same way as you do when writing a GraphQL query. And the same goes for subscriptions. Once this subscription is running, it is listening, the icon has changed to stop, and on the right here, we have a spinning indicator. We can see here in the tab that this is untitled. And this is because I haven't given the subscription operation a name. But if I change this to hello world, we can see now that the operation name is used inside of the tab. Next, let's explore writing a fragment. I'll go ahead and use the keyword fragment and I'll call this person info and we'll provide the type that we want to perform the fragment on. 
and here we'll call name. Then we'll write one other fragment and here we'll call person age. We'll then fetch the age from that person. Then down inside of my query, I'm going to spread that named fragment. If we execute this query, we'll see that we get the same result back. But what I want to show you now is the button to merge. This will merge in all of our fragments directly inside of our query. We can also quickly copy what is inside of here by clicking on copy. And we can open a history of everything that we've run before. And if we click on one, we can quickly return and update the current operation. We can also give our history items a label, but bear in mind these are kept in local storage. So if you switch browsers or endpoints, this is going to change. If at any point you're using variables with your GraphQL operations, then you can open the tab for query variables. If we update our operation to include a age, here we'll specify that age is an int, and then down here we'll invoke that delay and we'll provide age as the variable name. If we now run this, this will no longer work because we haven't provided any variables. And further on down, we'll add a delay for our age field as 100. And if we run this, we'll see that this takes an extra 100 milliseconds. If you're working with any GraphQL APIs that require you to pass custom headers, then you can do that inside of here. You may be working with an API that requires you to provide a authorization token, such as a bearer token. Here, you can provide it inside of the request headers token, and you can perform your operation as normal. And these headers will be passed along with the request. So hopefully that's given you all you need to know to get started with your GraphQL API using Graphical. Keep an eye on the graphical repo because there are many other things coming soon that we'll explore in other videos.